pleased to welcome Frank Cooper, the Chief Consumer Engagement Officer of PepsiCo American Beverages. Welcome, Frank. Thank you so much. And let me ask you, first of all, what are you trying to achieve with the new uh, consumer engagement strategy that you've initiated? What we're trying to do is, is really uh, find a way to have a deeper connection between our brands and our products and our consumers. And we think something really fascinating is happening in the marketplace today, and, and that is consumers are not only empowered to, do, to, to have more choices and, and to, to make those choices on their own, they actually want a relationship with brands, but they want it on their terms. And so we see that as a, as a really interesting opportunity. So instead of marketing in, the, in a traditional way in which we actually kind of shout from the mountaintop our messages, we're actually looking at going deeper into communities, going deeper into culture, and establishing an authentic relationship with consumers. And that's the transition from what we call traditional brand marketing to actual engagement. So give us one or two examples of what you're doing that is engaging, that's a form of marketing, but a different way of, yeah. of engaging the consumer. I mean, one, one good example is uh, on a brand Mountain Dew. And uh, we, we created a platform called Democracy. And um, the idea of Democracy is what if we allowed our consumers to develop every aspect of the next beverage? the color, the flavor, the name, the taste, and what if we even let them actually market the product? What would happen? So we did that. We created a platform, and uh, the first round we started with Force Whitaker. He, he created a live action film that, that lasted about three minutes. You ended up in this video game environment, an animated world, and within that world, consumers actually started creating the product. They formed teams, and we put these products out on the shelf in the real world. That product became the most successful limited time offering in PepsiCo history. We sold 17 million cases in 10 weeks. Uh, and then we followed up with the, uh, a product of, called Voltage off of that platform, sold another 15 million cases. So, so within the span of a year, we had a $300 million um, dollar business uh, on, on just that platform. And, and that's engaging consumers, inviting them in, letting them have a say but also creating a, a little bit of entertainment along the way. So it's, it's not just giving them the power, it's creating an environment and a context so that they can actually interact with the brand in, in ways that interest them. How do you find a, a giant brand that's been in the culture, Pepsi-Cola, for so long? Yeah. How do you decide, okay, we've got to change the story. We're not just a soft drink, you know, cola company. How do you re organize, rejigger the whole marketplace and your company and its culture to approach that. Yeah, I, I gotta tell you, that's probably the toughest thing for us because if you take a, a name like Pepsi-Cola, it's been around for over 100 years, and when you think about it, you immediately go to right. cola. It's, it's brown soda, you know, uh, coming off the fountain or in the, in the blue can. Um, I don't think you're, you're gonna ever change that perception, um, but that's okay. If you look at the underlying portfolio in, in PepsiCo, Here's what you see. You see Gatorade, which is iconic in its own right. And Gatorade, um, we can talk about it later, but it's really expanding more into this whole idea of sports nutrition and sports performance. Uh, you see Tropicana, you know, the number one 100% um, juice. You see Sobe and Sobe Life Water, which is enhanced water. Uh, I think that the underlying brands can stand on their own. And it's tricky because the overall corporation is called PepsiCo. And, and so there's automatically this attachment to and this, this cultural reference to soda and to cola. But uh, I'm actually really optimistic about the future for Pepsi and, and consumers' intelligence in terms of, of understanding what's in our broader portfolio. And I, I think that you, you'll see we're moving toward better for you and good for you products. And, and I think that is the future of the beverage business, by the way. So finally, let me ask you, uh, we're, this is about change, and you made this incredibly bold move to change the marketing strategy for PepsiCo. For example, you're not advertising, you didn't advertise in the Super Bowl this last year. Right. You were a staple of that. What was the impetus for this radical change? You know, so the Super Bowl was just kind of one tactical play, and, and um, I got to say, we, we love the NFL. Uh, Roger Goodell, hope you heard that. We, we absolutely love the NFL, and, and we're longtime partners. We've been partners with the NFL for over 10 years, um, 17 years if you look at the Gatorade partnership um, uh, in addition to Pepsi. Um, but we felt like there was a program that we were launching in, in 2010 that deserved a different kind of approach, and, and that program was called the Pepsi Refresh Project. And we believe that 
our consumers wanted to kind of express this DIY philanthropy. They wanted to give back, but they wanted to do it in their own way. They wanted to do it in their communities. And so we created a platform for them to do that. And it just did not feel right to us to actually spend that kind of money on a 30 second spot to create that kind of awareness. We, th we felt like coming from the ground up was the right way to do it. Uh, and and the, this is kind of at the core of our marketing too, by the way. This is the, the one point that, that really was the center of Pepsi Refresh. We felt like people trusted each other more than anything else. So the messages that spread through other people were the messages that they trust. Um, so we found a group of people that we thought represented the Pepsi Refresh project. We started to bring them into the fold and we let them spread the message and it came from a grassroots place. And I think that was the right thing to do uh, for, for Pepsi at that time. Now you'll see us on the Super Bowl again, by the way. You're gonna see in 2011, we're back on the Super Bowl, but not with Pepsi Refresh and the Pepsi Refresh project will live on as a separate uh, program. So it was really not about awareness, it was about perception. You, would, you didn't need the awareness of the Super Bowl, you wanted the right perception. I want the right perception and I, I wanted the right people to carry the message. I think for us, I mean, we can, we can, we can blast the message right. and, and we have the infrastructure to do it. Does, and people will hear it, but it doesn't mean that they will act upon it. It doesn't mean that they trust it or, or that they will embrace it. People trust each other. They trust their family, their friends, and people who are influencers within their social network, their real life social network. And that's what we wanted to penetrate. And, and we felt like going through this grassroots approach was a more effective way of doing it. Thank you so much, Frank. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.